Tonight's special guest is John Sumner. One of New Zealand's best known support actors, John has appeared in productions from Spin Doctors to King Kong. After just finishing a stint on The Hobbits, we asked John his thoughts and feelings on the recent Hobbit dispute. We welcome John Sumner as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. It's a big welcome to our special guest, John Sumner. How are you, John? I'm very well, Jared. How are you? Very good to have you in our humble studio. Thank you. Not so humble. A wonderful, wonderful support actor. That's it's been your life story, hasn't it? Uh, in the film and the television industry. It has for about the last 20 years, yes. Well, what, it, what is a support actor? Okay, well, usually it applies to overseas productions. Mm. Okay, local productions, you can be... You're a lead, and, and I've been a lead on a number of occasions. But most but of you all most of them from being say, a support actor, an for uncle, overs- a, a father-in-law, a grandfather. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Sorry Give about that. Break. <laughs> Although I am a grandfather bugger. Um, no, mostly, no. I, 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 cops, coach, doctor, yeah. lawyer, businessman, business leader, bent. Um, all sorts of different yeah. different characters. And that's for the international stuff. And every, yeah. every film needs all these surrounding all these characters. Com- all these components. And, uh, and they yeah. have to fill those roles. And, and, yeah. and there's just a, Myself there a tremendous amount of work out there, John? Uh, there was a lot in the 90s, yeah. and, the, and then it kind of, uh, it kind of dried up. Um, although, that said, <coughs> excuse me, you've got, you've got things like Spartacus, which put a lot of people in work, and they were very well treated. Um, and I think there are other things that will come. Um, of course, the other thing you have to accept that I'm, you know, I'm getting older now. So um, I, I think I'm moving to the point. I'm just before the time when they need a lot of death scenes. <laughs> but the one I, I loved you in it. I thought you were marvellous. You were the uh, head of the company in Spin Doctors. Yes. Yeah. Giles, the buffoon. Yes. Mm. Did, how did you know how to... Uh, or that whole crew seem to have some instinctive understanding of what a hyped up world it is, isn't it, in PR companies? <laughs> well, I loved it. <laughs> I did too, actually, and we all did. And um, the thing about it that was really interesting was um, I had done some, uh, I'd studied advertising at what used to be, uh, what was AUT now, but, um, and I kind of, being in the entertainment industry, you're not that far away from advertising and PR, and, but the, um, the writer for, there were a number of writers on the show, so we had uh, the uh, um, the wonderful Mr. You know Tom Scott. We had Mr. Griffiths, who's now Outrageous Fortune, and everything else that ever comes on television, um, and a whole team of others that were uh, uh, political writers and stuff. And it was a satire. And in terms of the character of Giles, it was simply a guy who had got in early, made a hell of a lot of money, decided he was going to be a winemaker. It sucks. He creates vinegar. And it was just a wonderful uh, character to be able to play, if I can put in parenthesis, a buffoon, um, who's well-meaning but very conscious of himself. And the greatest thing about it was that it it taught everybody a lesson. It didn't matter how big the disaster, there's always a solution. There's always a solution. There's usually no truth in it whatsoever. (laughs) You know, and uh, you can spin it whatever way you want. Exactly. So that finished in two thousand and three, and then there were other bits and pieces, and then, um, and then I'd, I'd worked for Sir Peter uh, on a, an earlier project called uh, The Frighteners, and uh, I was an admirer of, of um, his Peter work. Jackson, and Peter Jackson, yeah. yeah, yeah, Peter Jackson, and um, and I scored. I um, I was main cast in King Kong, and uh, I have to say, you know, for all of the upheavals that we all witnessed regarding the Hobbit incident. Um, in the time, I've worked for Sir Peter three times, and I can tell you what, he looked after me extremely well. I had all the same trimmings as the overseas leads. I was in with them, in the main cast with them, although I wasn't obviously a lead. That's very interesting. Let's look at the uh, ramifications of this, that uh, Sir Peter was fighting the unionisation of the industry. He took exception to the fact that it was an Australian um, union, if you like. Um, I actually, at that time, w- uh, had only just become a member of the union, thinking it was equity. I didn't really fully understand. It had nothing to do with the Hobbit. It had to do with something else, some legislation with regard to old f- old material that TVNZ wanted to n- sort of use without asking people's permission. It was something like that. I didn't really have the full story, but I thought, well, that's a bit off. So about two weeks before I joined, and then... <laughs> 
Then The Hobbit hit. So I was personally, um, I think there were points to be made, but um, I don't think that was necessary. I wasn't that comfortable with, with that. Well, what we have to look at is, uh, is it true or isn't it true that Hollywood itself, one of the reasons that Peter Jackson is successful and other places around the world are, becoming, are now making films yeah. is that Hollywood have priced themselves off the market and that was the fault of the unions? Is, the, is that a truth or is oh, that uh, I, Look, the, 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 they, the so, producers so the have thing, lived with it. Yeah. The so the same thing it. could happen here. We could price ourselves out of filmmaking. Very much so. We've got a high dollar. We've got, you know, I think, so, uh, you know, Robert Tabbitt, who is behind Hercules, uh, Xena, um, Spartacus, etc. cetera, he, during this thing, he said they don't come here for the actors. Of course, no actor wants to actually hear that, but there's some truth to that. Yeah. And they come here because they want to make something. They want to make where something. they can afford to make it. They can make it here for the money. And not only that, hats off to the crews. Yes. You know, their crews are amazing. Now, you know, everybody sort of sees the end product and she makes a whole lot of assumptions about, um, you know, what the industry's like, glamorous. Why? But the rest of the time, we're hanging out with the crew. They're, I mean, they're Kiwis like us. We're, you know, when they're good guys. They work bloody hard, and they go they go the extra length. I've, I've shot with them in oh. offshore and somewhere, and they will do things that the American crews won't do. Won't touch it. Yeah, and our guys will. So in America, they'll say, "Could you just uh, fix that piece of scenery up there? Just grab a hammer and knock that into place." And the Americans will say, "Oh, no, that's not my job. That's right. That's not my job. That's." Yeah. Uh, but the New Zealander will say, oh, yeah, where's the hammer? Yeah, <laughs> they'll do that. Not only that, people seem to forget that, that Kiwis are, I mean, there is a, an inherent thing amongst Kiwis that we're kind of storytellers, whether it's a joke, whether it's whatever. And the crew are very much part of that. It's quite, it's quite unusual to see. They take great pride in what, um, in what they do, and that's noticed. And I've worked with a number of overseas producers, and it's consistent over the last 20 years that I've been involved, or a little bit longer, that the crews blow things out of the water, often, you know, they really do. And at the end of the day, my grandfather, who was a producer in England, turned around and said to me once as advice, he said, you must understand, John, there are two parts to this. One's called show, that's what you sell. The other's called business, and that's what you count. Never get the two confused. <laughs> All right. And I, that was advice. a very valuable lesson. <laughs> you know. So, John, in fact, you sometimes sit in the middle. You've got your friends over there like Rob and Malcolm um, who are working hard for the actors and uh, go the union way. And, of course, you're thinking of um, let's get the production done. H how, do you, uh, how do you cope with the conflicting sort of... Well, first uh, of all, I res everyone, you know, we, we live in a free country. It's the right of speech. OK, the, I think the, for me personally, the error was to target The Hobbit. Um, I was at a meeting where the request was for a meeting. It wasn't for, you know, anything else. And the FIA, which is the Federation of International Arts, I believe, don't forget, I wasn't involved in this. They're the ones who called it. The, when it got out of hand, when it suddenly became a, a major issue that was seen as a challenge to Sir Peter personally, or whatever, um, and it got out of hand and the public were like, you know, it's a small country, then it was called off. And But it had like a bit of a tsunami effect after that. Um, I respect people who are going to express their opinion. I don't have to agree with it, but I think they're entitled to, to, um, to have it. And what about the decision by the New Zealand government to swing in behind Sir Peter Jackson and um, add that extra funding? I mean, you think that was a good idea? Because I, I, I personally do. I, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm looking at you know. I mentioned earlier about the crews and how good they were, and of course we know these people. We know them. You know, they, they're, they're sometimes their life is precarious, even more, sometimes as precarious as an actor's life. So you don't want to see your friends losing work. Um, but there's a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes that's very, very political. And, um, you know, that's not actually part of where I come from. Um, <clears throat> you know, when I'm, as a businessman, you have to deal with that. As an actor, it's a creative outlet. Um, but could you see the sense in the New Zealand government saying, we well, don't want to lose this Hobbit, it's going to generate huge yeah, I could. Yeah, profits I could, yeah, for us? Yeah, I could, I could, see, could that. see that. Well, I, I, I could see the sense. I mean, yeah. you're talking about um, something, you know, you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars mm. being poured into the local economy, especially down in Wellington. And the, and the future tourism uh, profits from yeah. the Hobbit going around the world. Well, right? we I mean, saw what Lord of the Rings did. I mean, I, I was in uh, Thailand at uh, Christmas time, so you go along to a picture theatre and, and here's The Hobbit in yeah, Thailand, you exactly. know, all over the world. Yes. And people are going to see The Hobbit and saying, wow, that New Zealand's great, I must go down there someday. There's, there's that, yeah. but that at, at the same time, you know, I, I, I'm still a member of equity and I, I will remain a member of equity. It doesn't mean to say that, you know, 
I, I don't go in there and disagree with some of my colleagues in, in there that are perhaps a, a, take a different view or a little bit harder nosed than I am. Um, but at the same time, you've got to support an industry and there are parts to the industry and the actors are just as relevant to take the actors out and well, what have you got? Okay, so you can bring them all in from overseas. Um, okay, fine, that's, that's well and good and apparently now you can because they've changed the law. But um, the fact of the matter is I think you'll find that even though that law exists, there are still going to be New Zealand actors in, 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 um, in major productions or even you know, uh, television series that are made in the States, providing that, the, that they still want to come. It's a hard business. It's a brutal business and it's dominated by the Americans. Um, you know, I just did a, a film early last year which called The Emperor that, that um, had a, you know, a whole bunch of New Zealand actors. Okay, the leads were Ma uh, Matthew Fox and, and Tommy Lee Jones, but a heck of a lot of the rest yeah. of them you support know, actors. Uh, you yeah. support it. We're yeah. support actors. I was one too, except I got a f I got an email from the director saying that I'm in the DVD extras. So <laughs> I, I didn't make the main cut, so there we go. They still paid me, what the heck. You're a baby boomer, John? I'm a baby boomer. What was the, uh, the year and the date of this wonderful occasion when John... I was in October 1951. 19 You're a classic baby. I'm a classic. I'm about six years after the Second World War. So um, not far before we get the gold card? Uh I know I've got another few years to go. Another few years. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, John. It's <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want, I want free trips to Waiheke. You're at Friends and Vineyards over there i got to get to. It's a wonderful feeling, <laughs> getting that gold card. John, with what you know now, what would you have done? Say you're a young man of, say, 28 now. Yes. What would you do today to, to follow exactly <clears throat> what you've ended up doing? If I, yes, if I had followed it that way, I probably would have gone to Australia. Um, Australia is <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's simply a question of population. And also, they also have the independent studios, the Crawfords and, and others, many others. I can't name them all. I probably would have done that. Um, but having said that, no regrets. You know, I live in a country, you know, if you look back on your life, I've never had to go to war. I've never lost any children to war. I've never gone hungry. Um, and, uh, you know, I live in a, in a wonderful country where m things that other people have to pay for and going to the beach, you know, a, <laughs> you line up with crowds of people here. We can look for a beach. Oh, there's only oh, there's three people on there. We'll move on. Um, you know, here we have a sense of space yeah. that I think in most people in the world don't even experience. And in business, in latter years, traveling uh, throughout Asia th mm. uh, for business and traveling back to Europe on business, um, no, nah, anywhere down under is fine with me. I'm not going anywhere. Oh. Don't, I, we, f don't yeah. we forget, um, I know we're digressing here, John, right. but um, I like digressing. Uh, we l with this country is the, the beauty of this country. Oh. And the, what you mentioned, there's never any shortage of food, and there's, um, everyone's healthy, and then you read the paper, and I sometimes think, are they living in a different country? Exactly. Gosh, you know. what are they moaning about? Yeah. We, we really have a... We've been placed on this. These two islands has been wonderful. I think it has. John, it's just been wonderful talking to a fellow baby boomer. <laughs> We've been, been through this wonderful journey together in New Zealand, uh, taking different paths, but always in the entertainment industry. Yeah, always, yeah. And I've, uh, for a long time now, I've wanted you to be sitting in that chair, and I'd like to say thank you very much for coming in today and uh, being a support actor on The Beat Goes On. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> nice to see you, Jerry. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. The Beat Goes On. We'll be back after the break with Kerry Adams from Music Planet and Artist of the Week.